Hello and welcome back again to the channel. This is the Apostate Angel. This is my third video on the debate so-called Islam versus theism. But so far we didn't see any Islam versus theism. We just see gods versus theism, science versus theism, and the other BS that this guy spell from his mouth. So let's dive in and see what he going to present and see which argument going to lead. So what's the first atheist cliche? The first atheist cliche, I call it the Professor Krauss nothing cliche. And as we say, Allah as well, he have to come from nothing. Because if you say every cause have effect, then Allah surely have cause and have effect. Allah affect the universe, so who caused Allah to be there in the first place? And if you read his book, you will see that Professor Krauss was a highly acclaimed academic. I mean, I am nothing compared to him. Thank <laughs> He's right, he's right, he's right. One second. By the way, him making a statement is not an argument. I don't know why you're clapping like someone who's obedient slave. This is an insult to intellect people and intelligent people to say is obedient slave. Why are you clapping him? They were clapping at you in the first time. Why you didn't complain? Now you're complaining. <laughs> One point. Please, please, I have a time to keep. So, in his book, he said he have a time to keep, but he's from the morning, he's just going around in a circle. Give us anything from the Sunnah Hadith to show us that this universe comes from Allah. If you keep quoting from the Christian and other religion, that debate is called Islam versus theism, and uh, nothing has to do with the philosophy and science. Book, which I really like his book, I like his style, I like his rhetoric. He wrote in his book, A Universe from Nothing. He said that nothing is nothing with italics. And essentially what he's trying to say, he's trying to change the label nothing, which in the English language is a universal negation. But he's saying nothing is actually something which is a quantum reality. And this is quite bizarre. And that's why you have to study philosophy because you need to make conceptual distinctions. For example, imagine I was in the hallway and I said, you know, I met nobody. And they gave me directions to this room. <laughs> or imagine if I said, for example, yesterday my wife made a great lunch and it was nothing. They all talking, 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 nothing there to show anything. You know, nothing tastes great with a bit of whipped cream. I mean. Yeah, he tried to be a comedian now so people can laugh and forget to, to check fact checked in. Does this make any sense? We need fact checked. You no, know, we don't need to have a laughing, a laughing, laughing. Give us a fact, we can check it so we can know your argument based on what. And Professor Krauss' use of nothing is actually something. He also says in his book in page 80, our universe will then turning to... Who care is nothing is coming from something. We need the proof argument. You need something to show that uh, Allah created the universe. To the quantum haze from which our own existence may have begun. And his own friend, Alexander Vilenkin, said recently, vacuum is very different from nothing. It's a physical object. But this is irrelevant almost because even Krauss admits in his book that these are speculative. So he gonna try it now to prove that nothing is, is something and that something is Allah. ...and inconclusive conclusions. Because he says, I stress the word could here because we may never have enough empirical information to resolve this question unambiguously. So I do respect what he's trying to do, but you would never take an inductive argument over a deductive one. We didn't see, my friend, any deductive argument. We, you keep saying deductive argument. I don't see where is the deductive argument. He deductive argument that the universe cannot come from anything. Then there is Allah. How you jump that jump is so far. Only someone intellectually challenged would do that, in my humble opinion. No, you know, even intellect. You're talking to a man, a physician man, a very well-known man. You're even talking in a respectful way. The second contention is that things can come into being without any cause. You have, a, you have a quantum vacuum, a quantum reality, and there are some atomic events that appear without no causes. I believe we have a strong defeat to this argument, and it concerns... Uh, I believe. This is not a science. Science is not a belief system. You can't believe. You can't believe whatever you want. We need tests. We, we make tests and we check things. We don't believe in things. Perceptions, and it rests on the Kantian argument. Now... I can order my perception in this room. I can see this very handsome young man. I can see the cameraman. I can see the wall. I... Your perception, Muhammad's perception in the, universe, in the world was flat. Now your perception changed because of the science. Our perception should be thus and not otherwise. In short, the very experience of an external event already presupposes an understanding of causal necessity. So these are the cliches. Let's go to the next argument, which is the nature of the Quran. Now, the Quran uh, nature of the Quran. 
It's from the morning, he's talking, talking, talking. Now he's going to say, we're going to go to the nature of the Qur'an. He's talking on the Qur'an is like something... ...which seeks to intrude into the inner dimensions of man. Now, this imposition is... Quran is only uh, it's only half this important because people think they are from God. You know, you born a Muslim, you never question. You even don't understand the Arabic of the Quran. I am in Morocco. Moroccan people don't understand the Arabic. What Quran reading? You read the Quran with between your family, but your family don't understand what. But the thing you said until you go to the seer and it this and that then you start understand what he talking about what a bullshit this is if you are an arab speaking the language the normal people speak in the street you cannot understand the, the quran that's why exactly what you do in here positive as the quran seeks to positively engage with your intellect and with your psychological disposition and the way the quran achieves this is by asking questions and in themselves they said uh, they're asking question this guy really can uh, give me a you know, heart attack when uh, muslim apologists speak about this verse and said there is a, a miracle or a scientific something listen what the people who live with rasul what they say about this verse وفي أنفسكم this is تفسير طبري سورة سورة الذريات 51 verse 21 listen what the salaf say وفي أنفسكم زبير said ابن زبير that was with the rasul وفي أنفسكم أفلا تبصرون في سبيل الغائط الغائط the place where you go to the toilet والبول the iron this is the الإزعاج العلمي we call it in Arabic الإزعاج I mean, Al-Izaj, like this disturb you, is not I'jaz. Al-Izaj was a miracle, but Al-Izaj al-ilmi. Sabeel al-Khala wal-Bawl, and it toiled. This is not even, you can't even say to your father or your mother, this is Al-Khala wal-Bawl. This is all the Salaf. There is no science here. Here, there is no talking about science. Science is in your head, not in here. Do they not see? Talks about the physiological reality, the psychological reality. My friend, can you come to read the Tabari? And read not just a Tabari, need the Tafsir Sa'di? Yeah? Nothing? Tafsir al Bagawi? Ah, Madhal? Well, Mashrab, Wahid, Yahur, Sabilan, well, Bowl, well, Gaet, you know? I don't even can translate it because this is too shit to, 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 to translate to people. But the Tabari is the best one, can bring you the, the narration, the verse, and he bring not one, Ibn Sufyan, Ibn Jarih, Al Jurayh, and Abdullah ibn Zubair, and Abdullah ibn Zubair here as well. Ibn Zayd, all of them, these people live with the Rasul. That's what they say about this verse. So don't try to take the Quran to a whole level, does not deserve that level you're taking it to. Even referring to things like consciousness. Yeah. This is why Professor Shabir Akhtar in his book, The Quran and the Secular Mind, A Philosophy of Islam, he describes what the Quran is trying to say with these verses. He says, Nature's flawless harmonies and the delights and liabilities of our human environment with its diverse and delicate relationships are invested with religious significance. Created nature is a cryptogram of a reality which transcends it. Nature is a text to be deciphered, evidences accumulating in the material and social worlds and in the horizons jointly point to a hidden immaterial order. Did you think this is quite when this guy they, they called somebody defending on Christian on Jesus Christ and they, they, they take his argument and they put it in the argument of Islam he take an argument defending Buddhism and they put, put past it copy past it to the Islam we need something from the Islam we need to see what Islam said about the origin of the universe is you give us nothing here to say the I'm going to refute your argument and your whole debate and I'm going to end this uh, this commentary so soon because I, I can't know, uh, commentary in a video of two hours full of absolute BS. It's said here. 
الحجاج قال the guys who don't understand Arabic the translation gonna be down there here سنة حماد عن يعلى بن العطاء عن وعيل عن حديس عن عمر بن الزبير قال قلت قال يا رسول الله أين كان ربنا أن يخلق السماوات والأرض قال في عماء ما فوقه هواء وما تحته هواء ثم خلق عرشه على الماء This is not ab uh, absolute BS. What is this? What is this? How, how you can explain to this to the sciences? Allah was there before the universe and he was in a darkness. Which is darkness? You know, I'm at darkness. Darkness is not, is not a nothing. Darkness is not a nothing. وكان في عماء ما فوقه هواء وما تحته هواء. What is this? No air above it, no, no air around it. وخلق عرشه على الماء. I mean the water here was, was before the arch. He said هو الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام وكان عرشه على الماء. He said he who created the earth and universe in six days and his throne was upon the water. So we're gonna see this water where it's come from. So to sh to see how Muslim think about this universe, so you can laugh with us. وقوله تعالى he said he sure was upon the water. He said here clearly that the water was before was before قبل خلق السماء والأرض before the earth and the heaven before the earth and قال كعب كعب this is a sahabi خلق الله ياقوتا ياقوتا is like a diamond he created a diamond green خضراء and he looked at it he looked at it إليها بهيبة and like uh, his greatness and this diamond become a water and she start uh, rippling she start rippling and she scared from مخافة الله she scared from Allah and she start rippling for that فلذلك الماء يرتعد for that the water still vibrant until the, these days so how this is possible so the water vibrates because of Allah he scared from Allah not because of the wind وإن كان ساكنا even if he was still he still vibrates ثم خلق الريح فجعل الماء على متنية then he created the wind and he put the water on the top of the wind how this is possible if you tell me فجعل الماء على متنية so he put the water on the top of the wind ثم وضع العرش فوق الماء and he put the throne upon the water وقال سعد عن ابن عباس ابن عباس this is the big sahabian إنه سئل قوم he said Allah was and was nothing before him and his throne was upon the water and then he created this the heaven and the earth then he write a dhikr and ulama first tafsir this dhikr of quran this quran was before this universe كل شيء and he write everything in the dhikr ثم اتى رجل ف... this is how the this is how muhammad think about creating the universe that allah was was there before nothing down there then he create the throne but they don't say the throne but uh, because they don't understand how they create the throne and then he create the water he see in a diamond and diamond become water when the diamond become water he create the wind and he take the wind and he put it in the top and he put the water in the top of the wind and they put uh, the his throne on the on, on the top of the wind and they said of them so yeah, try to make sense of all of this one. Interesting for a 7th century book, but the Quran goes even further than this. It produces an intellectual challenge for the whole of mankind. The Quran says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِرِيبِ مِمَّا نَزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُرَةٍ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ وَدُعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And if you are in doubt, talk, talking to crafts, talking to me, talking to everybody, if the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Are you kidding me? He said, Quran challenged the people to make something like this. First Quran in Arabic and people have to learn Arabic to make something like this. So the God only challenged people in one language. Secondly, people try to make like this Quran but they get arrested. As this lady was posted in the Facebook Surat Corona and she get arrested. Coronavirus blogger Emma Sharik Shaki give jail term over Corona. She gets six months because she posted Surat Corona. 
this is not a fair challenge when you challenge somebody when he do it you you get him arrested and the sora was uh, sora covid he said this is by Gnostic Hisham Gnostic or also called Kafir Maghribi Sora said Covid wal virus al mubid bal ajibu an ja'ahum min al sin al ba'id qala faqala al mu'minun malak atid kalla bal huwa al mawt al akid al yawm la farq bayna kafir wa 'abd murid i'tasibu bi habl al ilm jami'an fa huwa al nur al rasid waghsilu aydiyakum bil ma'i wal sabun ma lakum anhu mahid sadaq nusthiq al adim this is this is a challenge you don't have to get people arrested because they try to to uh, you know to live up to your challenge arguments in the Quranic discourse and we don't have time to talk about all the arguments historical arguments sociological argument and a whole array of intellectual responses but one I want to talk about is called the inimitability and the uniqueness concerning the Arabic language in the Quranic discourse which Islamic theologians and thinkers argue that it is a miracle now before I get into that we have to now discuss what is a miracle we have to define what a miracle is now the word itself linguistically comes from the Latin word miraculum, meaning something wonderful. And the yeah. traditional Western philosophical definition of a miracle. Now he going to look for miracles. He was talking about science and philosophy and the uh, creation of the universe. Now he going to jump to the miracles. So he going to explain to us the miracles. What the profound Islamic theologians and thinkers have done, they've redefined what a miracle is based on the Quranic discourse. And they have said that a miracle is an event that lies outside the productive capacity of nature, which means when you go to the nature of the event, you exhaust all possible naturalistic... Well, how does create the universe before the water? So our water is a miracle? Are you telling me the water is outside of this universe? Is a miracle? Explanations. And also there is no naturalistic causal link between the event and the nature... Have you seen a miracle before? Have you seen a miracle? ...nature of the event. And this is a far more coherent definition. Let me give you an example from the Quran itself. Now, the Quran talks about Moses, Musa, alayhi salam, upon him be peace. And <laughs> he said, Musa, have you been with Musa? I don't understand people. Mm. Musa died 3,000 years ago. Have you been there to see the miracles? You know, we need a miracle now. Why God now can listen to us and get down here? Why he have to sit down in the throne that we're nothing and watching us? He have to stand, come down here for five minutes and problem solve and pharaoh in the quran moses was told you to see allah can solve all this problem in five minutes in less than five minutes now we have the tv we have the broadcast we have the everything we have the phone we have the face facebook we have twitter you twitter you he can come down here for five minutes show up tell him oh listen people judaism is right or oh listen people Islam is right. Oh, listen, people. Christian is right. Problem solved. Done. Now we have, uh, we can take a program this and we can take a real picture and we can see the proof. No, when Musa was writing in the stones and uh, Allah have no, that time have no pen, nothing. You know, he said he created the pen. I don't know what's the pen. If he created the pen, why Musa write in the Musa commandment with his finger? In the Islam, I'm talking about uh, sources from the Islam because I didn't uh, read uh, Judaism or uh, Christianity. So I'm going to talk about this one from my perspective from the Islam. Said he writes the commandment with his hand for, in the stones. With that, there is no pen, there is nothing that time. Thrown down his wooden staff and it instantaneously turned into a live snake. Now, this have you been with them? I don't understand if uh, Cross, I think he's shy to, you know, to tell him something like this, but this is right answer to this guy. You stand up and you tell him, have you been there? Have you seen the miracle? You're going to say no. Well, then don't say about miracles. Miraculous event, the snake. Lies yeah, snake and donkey fly. The story of the donkey after he said when the prophet died, the donkey gets so sad, so sad, and he jumped to the bear, what they call bear, place well, where, yeah, when you get water, and he jumped and he killed himself. Outside the productive capacity of the nature of the event. The, uh, another miracle that uh, one tree, like a uh, half tree, like cut, the yeah, prophet used to sit on it and when the prophet died she was crying as well the wooden staff 
because the chemical makeup of the stuff is different to that of the snake. In yeah. actual fact, snake as well, and uh, when the water is sad, when the was. Uh, Market al Ahzab and the people and the people get so thirsty and they need the water and the water start coming out from the prophet finger. <laughs> that is the, the miracle. If that makes sense. Stuff. Yeah, well, stuff and add the stuff to the stuff. Well, prophet used to add food to the food and add stuff to the stuff. The stuff. So, yeah. To be even close of stuff to the stuff. Yeah. Creating a snake, but only the stuff was used. Yeah. So when we exhaust naturalistic explanations, we find there is no cause. Yeah, how you creating a snake, but you don't dare, you don't be there to see the miracle, and you explaining us the miracle. Moses, like you, been there watching him three thousand years ago, my friend. I. 100 years ago in uh, in the desert use people to see people like they are coming from outside this world between the staff and the snake itself so this gives us a definition of what a miracle is now this applies to the quran's use of the arabic language because the quran cannot be described as any of the yeah list alayhim bi musaytar al ghashiya verse 22 he said here list alayhim bi musaytar with sad with sad surah one second, Surah 88, verse 22. Lista Listen the language of the Quran. Lista alayhim bimusaytar. Sad. Yeah, remember this one. This was uh, Ibn Kathir. He correcting the mistake of Allah. He said, Lista alayhim bimusaytar. He forgot that Allah write it with a sad. Waqatta uh, saytar as seen. Waqatta salata seen. والذي تأويل في نحونا ذلك لست عليهم بمسيطر وقوله لست عليهم بمسيطر he correcting Allah mistake لست عليهم بجبار same meaning of this one not this one we don't have any book in Arabic now I'm looking any book that write this this exact word with sad no this is a mistake khata imla'i in arabic we call khata imla'i it's like you're writing a word with miss word you know it's not like another meaning no it's a big mistake the guy who was writing the quran he make a, a not this mistake there is plenty other mistakes like this i will cover them in another video but this is not our topic just to show you the mistake because he said the language of the quran literary forms of the arabic language which include saja ah, rhyme prose mursal straightforward speech maqama a combination of metrical and non-metrical speech and the al none of this none of this you study them because you prove that you don't know nothing about arabic origin arabic or anything about quran or or sunnah or anything you just talking talking absolute bs the 16 rhythmical patterns of classical arabic poetry now interestingly in classical arabic every expression falls within the known literary forms of the arabic language the quran however descopes the arabic language and the quran is a miracle from this perspective because quran is not doesn't descope the arabic language the quran is uh, created from the arabic language and arabic language created from the quran you can say how but it is like that the, uh, the, the arabic was people speaking arabic that time but nobody write it the arabic language not as people understand it's an old language no arabic language is a new language after the islam not before the islam uh, they was speaking arabic and other language and arabic was a, a tongue like when like now in morocco we speak different arabic that was arabic and then they make a book the first book was uh, i don't think this guy now that the first dictionary or uh, uh, dictionary in arabic it was in the 8th century this guy is called khalid ibn ahmed al farahidi this guy who's make the first dictionary in arabic uh, is Arabic language dictionary is the first is the first dictionary in Arabic and the one who earlier dictionary and in the language that is the early first language book in Arabic this guy the, so the Quran was before that just collected from the poetry and everything like that and they make the Quran so if you want to prove the Quran is wrong or something uh, like superior language on Arabic you can't because he is he is the first First book so that's uh, the Quran is the Arabic and the Arabic is the Quran it's made up of the Arabic language there is no causal link between the Arabic language and the Arabic in the Quran 
this guy said there is no causal link between Arabic and the Quran. It's so funny because if if he said that in the Arab world, they will stone him. That's definitely what they will stone him if he said that in Arabic language with Arabic language in front of uh, Arab people, Muslim Arab people watching. If he said that, they will stone him. Because when we exhaust the 28 letters, the finite grammatical rules and the finite words, we exhaust them, we cannot produce. I can't tell you this guy, I am, I am well educated in Arabic language. I'm going to tell you this guy, what he said is absolute BS. There is nothing from what, what he say in, the, in what he say. Use the unique literary form of the Quranic discourse. And no, from it's not unique. It is not unique, it's a language of the people that time. And when the time pass, people change the language and they don't keep it much like talking with it. That's why it, for you it's unique, because it's not one language, it's a mix of three or four, four, five languages, at least four languages is there. And there is a Muslim scholar who's Dead, you know who writing books or oh, how many language and they say clearly in them books and now you're trying to make something like Quran is come from extraterrestrial world or uh, something like it's that literary perspective when attempts have been made to produce the like of the literary form of the Quranic discourse they have all failed no we're not failed we try you kill us Amazigh uh, the Berba of the North Africa they make a Quran for 82 verses something like this two centuries and then they burn all like Omar did in the in Egypt and everywhere Muslim girls first they do they burn the book that's what Muslims do they burn all the books and everything this because the Quran it's only the knowledge that have to be teach as the academic Foster Fitzgerald Arbuthnot, a notable British Orientalist states, and that though several attempts have been made to produce a work equal to it as far as elegant writing is concerned, none have yet succeeded. In this light, brothers, sisters and friends, No, we succeed, we make a lot of Quran verses, but uh, you keep punishing people and you keep, you know, you keep censoring ship everything that we said. What we've just discussed can develop into a deductive argument. And listen very carefully. Uh, I'm going to bring no another deductive an argument. The productive capacity of nature. In other words, there are no causal links between the event and the nature of the event. Number two, the Quran's literary form lies outside the productive capacity of the nature of the Arabic language. Its literary form cannot be logically explained using that. No, I prove you that wrong so many times when you can see the first dictionary Arabic come after the Quran, not before the Quran. Arabic language. Therefore, the Quran is a miracle. As Professor Baha Hussain is a, is a Arab uh, well, blind uh, author, he make a book, you know, he's uh, said that uh, the poetry, pre-Islam poetry is wrong, just he want to, because so many people found it out that the poetry of the Quran is same, and that there is some chapter in the Quran is copy pasta from the poetry. So Taha Hussein want to clear up the Quran, and he, he say that the, the pre-Islamic poetry is come after the Islam, and they denounce him, and they want to kill him. If this guy, he says same as Taha Hussein, and I don't think he, he said what he said, in Arabic language he going to survive but because he defending the Islam nobody fact checking what he say from Duke University in his book the Quran a biography on page number eight said as tangible signs Quranic verses are expressive of inexhaustible truth they signify meaning later than meaning light upon light mirror. and the thing uh, the most people in the West does not know that the people who are using uh, scientific miracle in the Quran they are in the Muslim uh, scholar are kuffar are are apostates because what you do you explain the quran but you ignore the, the hadith and you ignore the rule of tafsir quran this is a, like what these people said is nothing to do with the islam they just let them say because they bring follower to the islam Otherwise, if they, they establish like uh, Islamic State, this guy cannot uh, never ever talk or say this one like the Quran have miracles or uh, or something like this. Quran explained by Al-Atar and I say that for every video. First, when you debate a Muslim, you have to 
make him stick to the rules that uh, if he, he didn't stick the rules then he can just go around loose the rules are the quran explained by by hadith if he can explain a verse by himself like he do now i can take a girl and come and said the prayer is not in the islam and only three prayer in the quran then ah uh, we only have three prayer no we're gonna they're gonna say i'm apostate but they allow him to say that because he bring in follower but he's what he's saying there is no ground in the in the islam about what he's saying miracle of the epistemology of testimony published by Oxford. this guy you talking about argument, which we could discuss later this guy about half an hour talking we didn't say anything that showed that allah exists or anything so the authentic and valid testimony concerning the Qur'an is no one has been able to challenge the Qur'an and produce its literary form. We try to challenge, but you can't challenge it, my friend. It's clear. If you just uh, said any one verse, post it in Facebook, and if you live in Muslim world, you'll get arrested, you will get killed. Don't say that. Don't challenge people for something. You punish them for doing it. That is absolute BS. You challenge people, and if they do it, you punish them. If that is true, then we could draw a logical conclusion. Uh, th then if it is not true, we can make a conclusion. Is it not true? Is it not true? Why this lady get arrested then? Why this lady get arrested? Why? I want to know why she get arrested. And why millions of people, of Muslims, calling for her death. Why? Why they calling for her death? Of the Arabic language. We could say, well, could it be from an Arab? Could it be from an Arab, non Arab? Could it be from Muhammad upon whom be peace? Or is it from the divine reality? We know it couldn't be from an Arab because they all failed, especially the best Arabs at the time. We know it can't be a non Arab because they don't fail. They don't fail. They said we can make like this, but if we can, we can. There are a verse on the Quran. There are a verse on the Quran when this when they told him we can make like this. They said we hear it. We hear this one. And if we want, we make one like this. Pre poetry Arab is much better than the Quran, but you don't read. That's why you don't know. You have to know Arabic. We know it can be from Muhammad upon him be peace because all human expression. If you have the book. Quran is come from Muhammad mainly from Muhammad. That there is the other people who helped him. Then we know that Dihya Al Kalbi, his close friends, was look like uh, Jibril, and they have uh, authentic narration from Aisha and from other that Jibril look like uh, Dihya Al Kalbi when he go out, he go to another place and bring him Dihya Al Kalbi, who was responsible of the stories and the Quran, like Surah Al Kahf or uh, or the. Dilqarnain or Ya'juj, Ya'gog and Magog and all the story Dihya Al-Kalbi who was because he was from Force Faris uh, Sasanian and he have this story who was to bring him Nofal bring uh, Nofal Waraka Ibn Nofal he used to bring the story of the Christian and of the Jews and other stories because he was to bring them from the Jew because, Jew because he was living with them Print, you can replicate it, just look at some replicas of Picasso and Monet in art, and therefore it must be from the divine. So from this perspective, yeah. we've dealt with some outdated cliches. And I'm therefore they must be from the divine. Well, thank you guys for watching. This guy just uh, talking absolute BS and he have nothing to show or anything. Officer Lawrence Krauss, he cannot uh, reply to him because he have no Islamic background. So for that, I leave you. I will see you soon.